Hello Internet, welcome to another tutorial on transient response of passive circuits. Today's tutorial is transient response in RLC circuits. Now in RLC circuits with DC excitation, we'll get an equation which is second order e equation, so it is known as a second order circuit. And the circuit looks something like this. We have a DC source. Uh, R, L and C are connected in series with this DC source. We'll try to figure out what the value of I is at any point in time, but uh, we cannot really predict whether the value of I will, will decay or whether the value of I will sustain because uh, L is, L is someone who will uh, want to pr propagate I in the circuit and C is someone who, who would want I to stop. So we know that uh, the characteristics of L and C for DC are extremely opposite to each other and when they come together in series in a circuit so they'll, they'll cause something which is unpredictable. So what are the possible cases for I that can happen? We'll discuss that. So the first step of analyzing any circuit, if you've seen my previous videos also, is to is to apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law on the circuit, and that would result in formation of this equation. is pretty basic then by differentiation we'll need to do it twice now we'll get and a little bit of rearrangement will give us this and I will substitute d i by dt by p let us say it is p then we get p square plus r upon l p plus 1 upon l c and everything multiplied by i is equal to 0 so what we have is we'll need to evaluate p square plus r upon l into p plus one, 1 upon lc is equivalent to 0 we'll need to find out the roots they'll be something like this alright now we'll assume alpha we'll assume alpha to be equivalent to minus r by 2 l and beta to be equivalent to r by 2 l square minus 1 upon l c and the roots become alpha plus beta and the other root becomes alpha minus beta so now, once we do that, we will end up having three cases that you need to understand. Uh, case number one will be the case when r square upon 2l square will be greater than 1 upon lc. So this term will be a real quantity, it will be positive real, right? And the second case will be when r square upon 2l is less than 1 upon lc. In this case, beta will be imaginary and then roots P1 and P2 are complex conjugates. 
and finally case number three will be when R upon 2L square is equivalent to 1 upon LC this time beta will be 0 so I'll paraphrase them again here beta is positive real here beta is a negative imaginary quantity and here beta will be 0 so then uh, we could we could find out the value of i because p1 will become alpha plus beta and p2 will become alpha minus beta and the solution for this equation will be this bit of rearrangement will uh, bring e raised to the power alpha outside so we can write it down as e raised to the power alpha t c1 e raised to the power beta t c2 e minus beta t and what we are left with is the response and it's current over damping so whenever you find a case where the combination of R upon L 2L square is greater than 1 upon LC in a circuit, you will ex you can expect your current to, to behave like this uh, with respect to the time in the circuit. And similarly, uh, from, from these cases, you'll find the instantaneous value of currents, which will be different for each case uh, I'll write down the final values and the nature of the current in this case will be something like this it will be a current oscillation scenario when we have beta coming out to be negative and imaginary and finally we get this case where high will turn out to be equivalent to C1 and C2 are the constants by the way and we get a response like this critical damping of current but in any which uh, way uh, we'll get one out of these three scenarios and but but just by looking at the values of r l and c will categorize the circuit into one of these categories and we we can predict the nature of the current with respect to time in that circuit by analyzing whether that circuit falls into case 1 case 2 or case 3 so that is how you analyze or you see the transient response uh, in RLC circuit with DC excitation this is pretty simple but it does not have a concrete result as um, the RL and RC circuits had it, they do not have a steady state value or a particular value uh, had uh, in finite time but uh, I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful and uh, um, if you like the content of this video please give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for stopping by and watching the video have a great day ahead bye